Hey, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is a little beginner tutorial for first steps in using the astrology program called Solar Fire. So I've been using Solar Fire since I think like 2004, 2005. Um, it's my favorite, and it is my primary astrology program um, on my Windows PC. I also use uh, Astro Gold, which is a related program on my um, Android phone. But when I'm on my desktop or my laptop, I pretty much always just use Solar Fire. So um, it can be kind of an overwhelming program, though, when you first get into it because there's so many different options and there's so many different settings. So in this video, I just wanted to give a quick overview of the main page on Solar Fire to give you an idea for what some of the different icons mean and what some of the different settings are. Just so you can sort of get started if you've just downloaded the program and installed it, and you want to know what is now available to you in this like full-fledged astrology software program. All right, so let's uh, switch here to uh, looking at my screen. So this is the main page of Solar Fire. So as soon as you open the program, it will generate a chart for you for the current date and time. Um, down at the bottom, it will show. All of the current planetary transits. And if you mouse over it, it'll show the, the ingresses, like when a planet um, went direct or stationed recently, little thing about nearest lunar phases, uh, nearest, I believe, eclipses, and all sorts of other stuff like that. Um, in the center here, it has the calculated charts that you currently have ready to open. And to the left, it has a chart preview of the um, chart, whatever chart uh, of the moment. So if you click on any of the calculated charts, it will bring that chart up for you um, in full screen. So I'm going to close that. Um, I want to focus, though, on the uh, menu bar up here at the top and specifically the quick access icons because these are. For the most part, all of the, the main things that you'll be using in the program are accessible to you right there in the icon menu. <clears throat> so, all right, the very first icon is just to cast a new chart. If you click this button, it will open up the data entry page. So, with that, um, if you want to cast a new chart, you just enter the birth data. So, I'll do chart for, um, I don't know, like September. 10th, let's say September 10th, 2020. This is the name of the chart. Then you enter the birth date, time, place. It'll look up all this stuff for you as long as you spell the name of the city correctly. Um, if you want to, there's some stuff over here where you can like categorize the event type. You can pick your house system. I have it set to whole sign houses, although you might want to set it to like Placidus or some other house system like that. Uh, but let's just say for the sake of things, we're doing whole sign. You can pick the zodiac. So tropical is most Western astrologers default, but you can also pick different sidereal zodiacs, like the like Lahiri Ionamsha is like sidereal. Uh, I'm going to keep it tropical. Um, also, you could switch it to heliocentric if you wanted to, but I don't really know why anybody would want to do that since we live on Earth. So our vantage point is typically casting charts for Earth. Um, you can also give it a rating based on the rod and rating system, uh, where you can find out more information about the rod and rating, rod and rating system uh, on astro.com. And if you want to, you can type a little note, like you can say AA and from birth certificate. Certificate. Okay. Um, additionally, if you want to, if you click the comments, Button, you can pull up a thing to write uh, much longer comments about the chart. And I don't think this has any space restrictions. So you can actually write like a detailed biography of the person or a bunch of event dates or whatever you want to remember about the chart that you'd like attached to the chart file itself. So, okay, if you once you hit OK, it will put that in the calculated charts. And then you just have to double click it in order to view the chart itself. So, um, yeah, so that's the chart. I'm going to close that again. Um, if you want to open your chart files, this is the open icon, and it will open up. Um, SolarFire comes with different databases, but you can also um, like create a new 
database if you want in order to put charts inside of that by clicking the create button or you can open up existing ones like this is a database that my friend Nick Dig and Best put together of uh, supposedly timed birth charts that he has. So some of these, I don't know how reliable they are, but once you get into the modern period, um, he's got just a bunch of different uh, birth chart dates listing the last name first and then the first name. And you could um, open up any of these charts. Uh, let's find a positive one. Uh, all right, I'm not finding a very positive one. There's there's a lot of like negative ones. Here's here's Lady Gaga. I didn't know we had a good birth time for her, but if you click it, then it puts her chart in the calculated charts list, and then you just double click it to open it. Okay, so that's how you open up charts, and then you can also save charts to those folders. It's really useful in terms of keeping things organized and. Um, for example, I have a, a folder for electional charts that I've saved or event charts. I have a folder for um, my podcast. Like each time I release a new episode of the podcast, I've been saving event charts for the release of different episodes. Um, you can do all sorts of different folders just depending on, on what you want to save and how you want to organize your data instead of just throwing it all in one big folder. All right, so other buttons. I don't use all of these buttons, so I'm going to gloss over some of them. So I use the first two. It's not really that useful. This button, you can toggle the zodiac, so you can switch it between the tropical and sidereal zodiac. So I have, for example, this first chart for September 10th set to the tropical zodiac. But if I click this button, it will go into the chart data and it will switch it to the sidereal zodiac using whatever the default sidereal zodiac is that I've chosen. So that's kind of useful if you're um, comparing tropical and sidereal placements. You can also toggle the geocentric versus heliocentric positions. Uh, this just allows you to print the chart. Uh, this button's really useful. This is the search for chart feature. So what this is is you can actually select one of your databases or one of the folders where you've saved your files, and then you could search through that folder for different placements in the chart. So for example, um, I'm telling it to search through the folder that, that has my friend Nick Dagan Best's time charts. And then over here, you can select different things. Like you could search for, you could say, show me all um, charts that have Mercury in the first house, and then you just click Add, and then you click Search, and it will generate, which in that folder is like a lot, it found 439 charts that have Mercury in the first house out of 4,434 that are in that folder. So that's a really cool feature if you want to do astrological research. Um, you can also search for planets that are in aspect or in certain types of aspect. So here I've set it to Mercury in a conjunction with Jupiter. And um, down here, you, you can change the orb. So you can pick an aspect set, or you can customize certain aspect sets in order to tell it what sort of orb you think is acceptable or what range you want to look for. I have it set right here to any conjunctions within three degrees of orb. So I just hit Add, and then I hit Search. And it searches through all these files, and it shows me um, which birth charts have Mercury within three degrees of a conjunction with Jupiter. So here's uh, Jim Carrey, for example, the comedian. And we open up his chart, and yep, we see Mercury is actually very close. It's within a degree, it's within the same degree of a conjunction with Jupiter at 14 degrees of Aquarius. So that's pretty cool and pretty handy. Um, I used that feature a lot when I was working on my Hellenistic course and my book in order to search for different combinations that I was trying to research more in order to get a deeper understanding of specific placements. Um, and there's tons of other things. You can do you can search for planets and signs. Um, you can search for chart shapes, midpoints, aspect patterns, like show me every chart that has a yod, for example, or Search for every chart that has a grand cross or 
whatever. There's a bunch of different patterns that they have built into it. And yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. So definitely check that out. Um, other buttons. This is the button you want to click if you want to progress or direct a chart. So this is how you get to secondary progressions, for example. And then you want to tell it if you want to use the natal location or the relocated location. Normally, I think you should use the natal location for pretty much everything when you're doing timing techniques like that. Um, this is the date that you want to set it to for what date you want to pick for um, either the current date or whatever future or past date that you want to look at in terms of their progressions. So here I'll set it to like secondary progressions for September 2nd for Jim Carrey. You have to select the chart you want to progress in the base chart here and then click OK, and it will generate a new chart for you, which shows you, for example, here Jim Carrey's progress chart for September 2nd, 2020. So there's a few other types of progressions. You can also do solar arcs here and other stuff like that. Annual perfections are right here, um, but that's how you do it. There's also a transit thing there. Um, the next button is return or ingress charts. So return or ingress charts are like when you want to do a solar return chart, you just set it to what year you want to do it. And then you can pick whether you want it to be the current solar return that the person is, is currently in as of this current year, or the nearest solar return, or the next solar return. I'll set it to just like current, whatever his current year is. Um, next, you can select either the natal or relocated location for the solar return. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You just hit um, OK. Let's see, why isn't it letting me? There we go. Solar return, current, natal, OK. Then it generates Jim Carrey's current solar return chart where his birthday was back in January, January 17th. So it casts a chart for the moment that his solar return occurred in his natal location, since I set it to use the natal location rather than uh, something else. So, um, that's the return thing. You can also do like lunar returns or um, other types of returns, in, including like Venus returns or Saturn return charts or other stuff like that. It actually gets kind of cool if you get into all the details. Um, so that's the return button. Next is the combine charts button. Um, I don't use that a lot, so I'm not entirely sure what that is. I guess that's the composite. I guess I always tr call that the composite chart button. So for example, if you wanted to look at the synastry or especially the composite charts between two people, you would select them and then uh, click the combined charts. Actually, you have to select them here as the base charts. So it'll say chart one, chart two, and then you have to choose what kind of composite or relationship chart you want to use. The standard composite chart is going to be the composite midpoints method. So that's the one that astrologers like John Townley use. Or if you're familiar with astro.com, that the midpoint method is typically the default method on astrodeanst or astro.com. There's also the Davison chart, though, which some astrologers like my friend Nick Dagan Best used. Um, I'm more of a composite midpoint person, just conceptually. So you click that. And it generates the composite chart, which finds the midpoints between each of their planets and then creates a third relationship chart. So that's that. Um, view page browser, I don't really use that. There's an astro mapping module. I haven't used this much because I'm not super into relocational astrology or, or locational astrology, but if you were, that's what this is for. Um, let's see. Aspect highlighting and filtering. I do have a special setting for this that I use. I always use by relative tightness of orb, and then I set the line width multiplier to four. So there's different ways that you can play around with that, but basically it just stipulates um, how thick the aspect lines are, and if they get more thick, uh, the closer they are to exact. So that's why some of my lines are very thick and blue, whereas in Solar Fire, if you just use it 
using the default, um, the lines initially when you first open up the program will be kind of thin and, and not very visible, but I, I like thicker lines. Let's see, uh, view reports. That's something that's useful to use, although I usually access it by opening the chart and then clicking the uh, reports button over here on the right. That way the chart itself is like actually open and I can look at it. Um, so there's tons of stuff in the reports. So it'll give you different breakdowns of like aspect lists, um, different rulership schemes, midpoint trees, all sorts of stuff. Um, this is also for those that do traditional astrology. Um, the Solar Fire people, the programmers, integrated Zodiac releasing a few years ago, and you can access this by going to the chart reports and tabulations, uh, clicking the tabulations tab, and then scrolling down to Zodiac releasing, and then just telling it what lot or what sign you want to start from, and then it will generate the Zodiac releasing periods from there. So that is how you uh, access and generate Zodiac releasing periods in Solar Fire through the reports button. All right, uh, what else do we have? Dynamic report. Um, that can be useful if you're doing like transits and progressions and stuff like that sometimes. I don't use it that much. Graphic ephemeris, I also don't use that much. Eclipse search can be fun sometimes if you're searching for eclipses and when, when the eclipses will occur and what degrees they're going to occur at if you want a list of just the data. Um, the electional search feature is really useful, and I've been using this a lot lately to find charts that fit certain criteria. So you can tell it to basically what you do is you set a time frame. So let's say January 1st, 2020 through January 1st, 2021. So basically just this year. And then you can tell it what criteria you want it to search for, and it will search through the ephemeris and it will tell you when those alignments occur. So for example, if I do a search for Jupiter conjunct Saturn, and I set the aspect range to only exact aspects, then um, let's see, then I add it, and then I do a search, it will search through that entire range, and it will tell me if there are any conjunctions between Jupiter and Saturn in that time frame. And in fact, it, leaves, it finds one exact conjunction that occurs uh, this December, 21st, 2020, when Jupiter and Saturn can join at exactly zero degrees and 29 minutes of Aquarius. So that's a pretty cool feature for electional astrology, especially like if you're looking for, let's say, a Venus Jupiter trine or um, a Mars Saturn square that you want to avoid, uh, it can be super useful. It can also be useful. Um, <clears throat> I was using it recently to look for Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions around the fall of the Roman Empire, or the advent of the Roman Empire actually is what I was searching for around the first century, just to see what Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions were occurring around that time. And it just generated a whole list of like 10 or 20 conjunctions within a three or 400 year time span, which is really useful for historical research into mundane astrology. Uh, the only thing I, I have to warn you about is that sometimes um, the searches can take quite a while. So if we search for just like a 20-year period of January 1st, 2000 through January 1st, 2021, and I hit search, like we can see it starts taking longer than it did using the previous search. So this is going to take a few minutes to complete. So I won't um, I won't let that go the whole time, but just a warning that if you set it for a super wide time frame of like a few centuries, it may take a little bit to do the, do the search. All right, so that's the search feature. There's also I, I use this button pretty much the most. Like this and the animate chart feature are my two favorite buttons and two favorite features in Solar Fire. The animate chart feature or the the clock feature basically just casts a chart with the current astrological positions set for your location or whatever default location you've told Solar Fire that you're using the program in. So this is a chart that's just like a clock for the moment, but it tells you where the ascendant is uh, right now. It tells you where 
uh, the moon is right now and all the rest of the planets at this specific moment in time. And what's cool about it is it will keep moving the chart forward as um, the seconds and minutes progress in the day. So over the course of the day, you can actually watch this. You can watch all of the planets move all the way around the chart. So I sometimes have that set up um, on like a second or a third monitor, and just sort of have it on in the background during the course of the day. And it's kind of fun to watch um, different things happen during the course of the days when certain aspects go exact. So that's the clock feature on Solar Fire. There's also the animate chart feature where you select whatever chart you want to animate in the calculated charts, you click animate, and it will allow you to move that chart forward in different increments of time. So let's say we want to move the chart forward in days. So we click days, then we move it, um, we click the backwards or the forward button, and it will literally move the chart forward according to those different increments of time. So you can move it forward by days or hours in order to check different rising signs. You can also move it forward months or even years, which uh, can get really interesting if you're studying very long spans of time. So I use this especially for electional astrology because it really speeds up the process of looking at electional charts during different time frames. Um, so let's say you've got to plan like a wedding in the next month and you want to um, zoom in on specific dates, or if you want to zoom in on specific hours and specific rising signs, it just allows you to really speed up that entire process. So that's one of my favorite features. Um, if that's all Solar Fire did, the program would totally be worth it to me. But in fact, it can do like hundreds of other things, but that just happens to be the feature that I use the most. Uh, let's see, other stuff, Astrologer's Assistant, I don't really use that. Uh, there's a calendar feature I also don't really use. Uh, birthday reminder list is not something I use, but could be useful. And then finally, there's the help contents, which are somewhat useful, and there's the preferences button. And this is where you set all of your default preferences. So if you want it to use the true node or the mean node, whether you want it to use a different formula for day and night charts for the lot of fortune or the part of fortune. Um, yeah, and different stuff like that. So some of this you don't really need to change. You can change like the default zodiac and whether it's tropical or sidereal. Um, you can tell it what Ionamsha you want it to default to. Uh, this is where you tell it what your default house system is going to be. So I have it set to whole sign houses. And whole sign houses. And I also tell it to um, use this house system for both new and open charts. That way, uh, it always casts charts in whole sign houses. Let's see, elsewhere, um, this is where you set your default chart style uh, using the different page files. Um, let's see, glyphs, eclipses, stations. A lot of this you just leave at the default. Um, you do want to hear under places, you want to set your current city. Uh, you want to add your city as the default place. And that's really important because that's how the clock and the animate feature know where you're currently at and what to set the astrological chart of the moment for by recognizing that as the city that you live in. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So those are the main features of Solar Fire. The only things I didn't get into were some other stuff about um, when you open a chart, there's a bunch of buttons over on the right, uh, and you can pull up different things. For example, to copy or save a chart, you can export it as a PDF file here, and that's usually the best way to export charts where you'll get the highest quality um, image file. You can also print charts, and there's also different layouts. So if you click the page but pages button, you can pick different layouts um, for the charts depending on what sort of data you would like to display. So the pages show you just like different types of data. And you can actually customize this. All you have to do is like click a page that you like and then click edit and it will bring up the page designer in Solar Fire which allows you to like move around stuff and add different 
things or subtract different things from um, from the page design and everything else. So that gets kind of complicated. I'll save that for another tutorial. Um, I do have a specific page design that I like to use, which is my Hellenistic page design. Um, I do have a separate video where I give a tutorial on how to install that page design and um, how to basically access it. So I'll put a link to that below this video for those of you that want to install this specific layout that shows like the essential dignities in the top right, the aspects, the different lots, the lunar phases, and the retrogrades and stations. And then this specific chart design as well, which I kind of like um, over on the left, because there's actually different wheel styles that you can use that are different than that, um, which would be like things like this, which get really complicated and really crazy, but you might like some of those. Or you can just stick with the custom one that I designed, which I think is pretty simple and pretty cool. All right, so I think that's actually it in terms of this basic setting, uh, basic setup for Solar Fire and basic tutorial on how to use the program. So if you'd like any more tutorials on how to use Solar Fire, then let me know. If you have any questions, then post them in the comments section below. So if you want to get this program, it's available from alabe.com. The company that programs it is called Astrolabe. And uh, they actually give me a promo code, which is AP15, uh, sort of like Astrology Podcast 15, but just shortened to AP15. And if you use that promo code during checkout through alabe.com, you'll actually get a 15% discount off of the program. So it's a pretty good, pretty good deal. All right, so I'll put a link to the Alabe website in the description below this video in case you want to get the program. Otherwise, good luck using it. Uh, I hope you get lots of use out of it and enjoy it. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below this video. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you again next time.